Do the Baltimore Ravens have some potential big moves on the way this upcoming NFL season? Well, by their recent actions, it may be indicative that they ain't ruling nothing out. Team Keep It Clean, we about to get into it. Before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on. We live tomorrow night, baby. We live tomorrow night for the Ravens and Chiefs game when the Ravens will win against Kansas City in Kansas City so they can have that extra motivation throughout the rest of the season. But after you subscribe to the channel, after you turn your notifications on, make sure you leave a like on the video because it helps out the channel a ton. Now, the Baltimore Ravens, Eric DaCosta, their GM, he said about a week ago in a presser, he said, we are going to restructure some contracts so we can be cap compliant. The deadline to get cap compliant was tonight, or it is tonight. But you know the Baltimore Ravens, like we saw with everything that they do, especially when the roster was announced, the Baltimore Ravens, they like to wait till the deadline to do a lot of that stuff. They like to wait till the last minute to announce a lot of what they got going on. But they did announce some restructures yesterday, and the restructures were as follows. Said, the Ravens restructured the contracts of defensive tackle Namdi Matabike, not Justin anymore. We're going to get into that in a little bit. But Namdi Matabike, kicker Justin Tucker, and linebacker Roquan Smith, and they created 9.3 mil in cap space. Now, 9.3 mil for the Baltimore Ravens before the season, especially the way that they operate, that's a good little chunk of money to have for them. Because we know with Baltimore Ravens, normally they like to have about – Five mil in insurance money in rainy day funds for just in case somebody gets hurt, just in case you got to sign a free agent here or there. But the fact that they cleared out nine point three mil in cap space and that, that's how much they have available. And Brian McFarlane, he did the following. He broke it down and he said uh, the Ravens will be under the cap prior to the midnight deadline. Uh, for Matabike, they saved 3.9 mil. With Roquan, they saved 3.6 mil. With Tucker, they saved 1.7 mil. They have a total of 9.273,750. So they have about 9.3 mil in cap space, just like Phil Yates said. But what are they going to do with it? Eric DeCosta talked about it the other day. He said that we are going to clear up some cap space through restructures um, of several players, and they have obviously done that. But he said they just want to be ready just in case they want to sign somebody, just in case they want to make a move prior to the trade deadline. And we know that with the Baltimore Ravens, prior to the trade deadline, they are active. They are an active team that they always try on something. It does not always happen, and it doesn't always work out, but they certainly are always trying last year prior to the deadline baltimore ravens knew running back he was supposed to already have been here they had already had everything worked out to acquire derrick henry last season right before the trade line that deadline had it all figured out but the titans at the last second said nope we ain't doing it i remember another one that they were talking about was xavier howard that was a couple years ago when marcus peters when he was out and there have been more, too, but those were some ones that didn't go through. I remember Jamal Adams, I think that was back in, I want to say 2019. That obviously didn't go through either, or maybe it was 2020. But anyway, um, there were some that have gone through, like a Marcus Peters, like a Calais Campbell, and that happened way before the trade deadline. Uh, there was a Yannick Ngakwe. So there's some time. Ravens going to take some swings now. And I, I know with the Baltimore Ravens, we get on them a lot about not making enough moves in certain areas, but in a lot of other areas, they, they really load up that roster, and the trade deadline gives them an opportunity to do just that. What I envision for the Baltimore Ravens, because this was a question uh, yesterday, the day before yesterday, if the Baltimore Ravens do make a move prior to the trade deadline, what could it possibly be for? Now, I know some people have said, oh, offensive line. They're going to trade for an offensive lineman. Now, my hope, my hope is that they don't. Because if they do not trade for an offensive lineman, what does that mean? That the offensive line is doing an amazing job, and that will be the goal. What I think they could end up trading for would be a wide receiver. Now, I know a lot of people are tired of the wide receiver talk. Wide receiver this, wide receiver that, da, 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 da. But my reasoning for that is Hopefully correct because I want Zay Flowers 
be killing it to just continue what he did last year. We all want Rashad Bateman to get off on the right foot tomorrow night in Kansas City, just surprise and shock the whole world. We want him to go off. With Tez Walker, he will be a nice surprise if he's a contributor this year. Tylen Wallace, Nelson Aguilar, even Deontay Harder could get into the mix. And maybe they'll throw in somebody else as well. But the reason that I say wide receiver is because – if the Baltimore Ravens are doing how I expect them to be doing, how a lot of us expect them to be doing, especially come regular season, and they're strong in a lot of areas, they got some nice depth in a lot of areas, wide receiver is the one area where they do not have much depth. They don't have much depth. It's just a lot of question marks there. And why wouldn't you want to make a position of question strong? perhaps even elite. Now, what they could possibly do, look around the league and be like, all right, what teams are struggling this season? What teams are not doing so well uh, prior to the trade deadline? And that's who you take advantage of, especially if it's a receiver who already he's already on his second contract. You may be looking at him like, oh, okay, you will fit in real good right over here. That's what I would expect the Baltimore Ravens to do. But what do y'all think? What do y'all think the Ravens are going to do with some of this extra money that they got in their pockets? You think it's just going to be for them to save and put on a side and just chill and relax? Or do you think the Baltimore Ravens got something up their sleeve? Y'all let me know in the comment section. Now, we talked about how the Baltimore Ravens, they reconstructed some contracts to get some money. And one of those contracts that they reconstructed and reworked was that of Justin Matabike. But he is no longer Justin Matabike because just like his contract, he also reconstructed his name. And he said... Um, the intention was to just uh, be true and just be me. I just felt like when I keep it real, the better player I am, the better man I am. I just was like, I'm going to go with my real name. And Namdi is my real name. So shout out to Namdi Matabike. We got to get used to saying that. Um, but it, it reminds me of, remember Justin Owe? Yeah. I, oh, no, excuse me. Jason Owe. I got Justin and Jason confused. My apologies. But Jason Owe, that's what Adafi Owe used to go by. But once he got drafted, he was thinking like, hold up. Wait a minute. No, I'm, I'm rocking with Adafi and I'm, I'm changing my name. So now he is going by and has been going by since his rookie year, Adafi Owe. So with uh, with Namdi, oh, I almost called him Justin. My apologies. But with Namdi, Matabike, like the saying goes, you look good, you feel good, you play good. So I feel like he was already going by his real name last year. So let's hope he continues. Baltimore Ravens, they probably landed by now by the time you've seen this video, but they are on their way to Kansas City. But we got an injury report update uh, from the two players, oh, just on two players that was on the injury report yesterday. So nothing changed. So that is a good thing. Adisa Isaac, rookie. Adisa Isaac, he is officially out. He will not be playing in this game. And Rasheen Ali, he is listed as doubtful. So there's a high chance that he does not suit up against the Kansas City Chiefs. Jeff Zrebic talked about how those two were possible and are possible injured reserve candidates. If the Baltimore Ravens feel like they got to make a move, if something to pay attention to tomorrow or on game day. If the Baltimore Ravens are going to make a move, then it has to be done by 4 p.m. Eastern time on game day. So look out for that. And now we have my favorite part where we feature your questions in the video. Now, this first question came from the newest Team Keep It Clean patron. Shout out to our guy, superstar Dre Dre. Appreciate you becoming a Team Keep It Clean patron, my friend. But you, you ain't got to make life harder for yourself, man, because my guy Dre, he became a Team Keep It Clean patron, but he sent an email. So my guy putting in double work, you ain't got to do that no more, my friend. You just send your questions directly on Patreon. Much love to you, though, man, for real. He said, hey, Engraven, I hope you and the family are doing well. We are doing really, really good, superstar Dre. He said, uh, we got football tomorrow. Thank God. Yes, we, we made it. Like, y'all think about that for a second. We made it. It seemed like that AFC Championship, it, it don't even seem like it was so long ago because we keep hearing about it every single day, every single hour this week. And we knew that was coming because we're playing the Chiefs. And the last team we played in a real meaningful game was the Chiefs. And 
We didn't really play real meaningful football. Though. But anyway, he said, but on a serious note, I find it very funny how people criticize Lamar like he just had a terrible game, not a good, not good games uh, and on the regular and postseason, but people are blowing it out of proportion. But guys like Joe Burrow, who hasn't done anything in about three going on four years, it's literally old news. And let's not start with Josh Allen, a.k.a. Brett Favre. He can beat Mahomes and the Chiefs all in a regular season, but can't beat them in the playoffs. Like, it's crazy how these other get, others get praised for passing Ooh, past news and not what they've done lately it's a really good uh argument to have because um the way that lamar jackson gets spoken about the way he gets talked about is as if he is one of the only quarterbacks in the league without a super bowl but at the same time Another reason, uh, well, a big reason the way that he gets talked about is because he's also a two-time MVP. So when you're a two-time MVP, the bar is raised. The bar is raised a lot. People are going to expect so much more from you as a two-time MVP because that's, that's big. Like That's like historic. That's Hall of Fame worthy right there. You were not only the best player in the league once but twice. And you receive 99 out of 100 votes. So if you looked at like that, then people, your, your Super Bowls or the fact that you don't have any Super Bowls yet, even though you have some nice teams, y'all came close, but no cigar is going to be looked at and talked about a lot differently just because of that. Since he set the standard so high as a player, people look at him like, all right, you set the standard high as a player. Now, what about the rest of your team? What are y'all going to do? What are you going to do? And that's how a lot of the media views uh, Lamar Jackson. And Lamar said it. Like, he said, the only thing that bothers me, the fact that we ain't got no Super Bowl yet. That's it. And, you, you know, you, you know, he don't care about none of that other stuff. He, like, not that he don't care about, like, the other accolades and stuff, but the biggest thing he wants is the Super Bowl. And he said that from jump, literally from before he took a snap. When he first got drafted, the night he got drafted, y'all gonna get a Super Bowl out of me. Y'all gonna get a Super Bowl out of me. So Lamar Jackson, before he even threw his first pass in practice, before he even got to Baltimore, before any of that, he set the standard for himself. Like, look, y'all are going to get a Super Bowl out of me. Believe that. We do believe it. We know it's on the way. But again, what better year than now? Well, last year would have been nice, but... Uh, we get it this year. Anyway, he also said this is arguably Lamar's best team offensively, like ever since he's been in the league, literally in a new system in the first year. That should tell you a lot. But the offensive line scares me a little bit. We'll know more on Thursday. Right, right, right. Um, also, this will be my last thing, and I'm going to try to send it to you. But I just seen a post yesterday on Twitter showing Lamar's and he put weapons in quotation marks. He said, I, I saw a, a post on yesterday showing Lamar's weapons. I think Hollywood had a little bit over 2,000 yards in the nearest wide receiver, not including Mark Andrews. Yards were, if I'm not mistaken, 1,200 to 1,300 yards. That's a major problem, especially if you people on TV claiming he's had help. LOL said. Now that part, with we've been talking about that on here for a while too. I, I just feel like the Baltimore Ravens, while they've gotten two MVPs out of Lamar, I still feel like they have not even gotten the best version of Lamar Jackson that there can be. I, I really don't. Because while, and I know a lot of commentators and analysts, their argument is, oh, the Baltimore Ravens, they've drafted the most first-round wide receivers, and they've drafted, I think, the most wide receivers because you throw in the other rounds as well. Um, but as far as my thinking on this whole thing is yeah, th they've been drafting. They've been trying that way. I, I like that. But – in my opinion, it should not be enough because they draft defensive players. They draft uh, linebackers. They draft cornerbacks, and they still have really good veteran corners to pair with them. But with the wide receivers, they'll draft a wide receiver, but then they'll get somebody who just – they definitely ain't in there. They're way past their prime. And now they're still in the NFL, so shout out to them, but they're just not what they used to be. What I'm hoping, what I have been hoping for is that the Baltimore Ravens, they not only go through the draft, but they go get somebody who's, oh, they like that? Oh, okay, they are, yeah. 
All right, but something in the, along those lines. But yeah, great question. Shout out to your superstar, Dre. But remember, you ain't got to send an email no more. Just send it right on Patreon. Now, we got somebody else who knew chiming in, sent the question, my guy, Will T. He said, Aang Graven, just got one question for you. What do you think about what Zach or the defense will do this year, depending if you see this before or after the Chiefs game? Oh, we, we got you before, my friend. You sent it with good timing. Uh, he said, do you expect what the defense did last year or maybe how the defense was in 2012 or 2013, uh, the Super Bowl team, where they weren't a top 10 and really like top 20 in defense. Yeah, they were uh, – oh, no, the offense was middle of the – no, the defense was middle of the pack. They were like 15 or 16. Um, but he said, uh, really like top 20 in defense with the offense being really good. Love what you're doing, and I'm sure as heck that I'm going to be watching your videos, especially since I'm homeschooled uh, for my senior year. God bless you and the family. Will from the Ville. Appreciate that. Now, is that Louisville? Louisville? Or that, that, that Ville? Oh, but anyway, let me know. But, Will, um, that's a, a great question. With Zach Orr, um, mm, how do we think his defense is going to do? Ooh. Now, um, I think his defense is going to do good because we've seen a lot of defensive coordinators come and go uh, with the Baltimore Ravens. Um, we've seen a lot come in and have – Immediate success, we've seen a lot come in, and sometimes it's taken a little bit, but they've had success. And with Zach Orr, he's, he's, it's not like he's new to the Baltimore Ravens. He's been around the Ravens. He knows the culture. He knows the vibe. So with, based off of that alone, like I think he's going to get this thing right now. Early on, and not even just this Chiefs game, I, I think he's definitely going to have his struggles. Now, what better way to start? What better, what better test to take than going against the Super Bowl champions, Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid? Like, that's a crazy test from jump. But I think it, it'll take some time. It'll take some time. Now, if, if you want to go out tomorrow and ace the test, hey, do it. No problem. But I, I think we got to be realistic. Um, is he going to come out there and shut Patrick Mahomes down? I don't expect him to. But if he does, no, again, no problem. But we got to give him time. Not just one week, not two weeks, not three weeks. I say about six to seven weeks to really see how he gets this thing. But if I had to put like a number on it as far as what rank the defense will be, um, I think if for this being his first year, if the defense overall is 11th in the league, I think that would actually be a success. It's first, first time being a defensive coordinator. But um, – with Baltimore Ravens, I think that he does definitely have an opportunity to do better than that. So, you know what? I'm, I'm going to go floor with this defense overall, 11th, and I am going to go the ceiling with his defense I'll go five. Oh, I love when so many new people send in questions. Shout out to my guy, Jalen. He said 2019, but better. What's going on in Graven? First of all, I want to say thank you for the content. No, you ain't got to thank me for nothing. Thank you for watching it. I thank you for checking it out. So I appreciate that. He said, been a subscriber since 2021. Oh, man, thank you. That's a, that's a, that's a long time, man. That's, we in 2024, getting ready to be in 2025 in a couple of months, but I appreciate that. He said, this was one of the channels that helped me keep uplifted while I had COVID and didn't think I would make it. Oh, man, that's real right there, man. I, I, I appreciate that. And, and I'm, I'm glad that you're doing good. I'm really, really, really glad that you're doing good. So I, I appreciate that a whole lot. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you, man. I, I know... um. Really, uh, 2020, that's when the whole pandemic thing happened. I know what my goal was, and sorry to get side sidetracked, but a big goal that we had um, when we really started doing this um, was, and this was oof, years ago, but a big goal was to just give people a break because we all go through so much stuff, so much stress on a day-to-day -day basis in this world. It's, it's always something. We all always going through something. We got something happening. Um, but I just wanted people to be able to come on here, watch a video, whether it's 5, 10, 15 minutes. Sometimes these videos will be like 30 minutes long. They're going to be a little lengthy because I got a lot to say. But I just wanted people to get a break from the norm. Just take it easy for the have a long the video is, laugh, joke, talk about whatever we want to talk about uh, when it comes to our favorite football team. But just have a good time. So um, I know in 2020... A lot of people, they were going through it because that was a tough, tough, tough year for us. So, and then the years following that, too, because 2020 literally changed how so much of life was. It changed a lot with people um, for the worse. And it just it just changed so much. So um, I, I, 
with you saying you've been watching since 2021, yeah, that's when a lot of stuff was still going on as far as with the pandemic and stuff like that. Stuff's just it it, it just forced us to have a new normal. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm glad that you're doing good now. I'm glad that you in good spirits now, and, and I appreciate you uh including that in your question. Um, he also said, uh, my question is, do you think this is the year where the Ravens finally? Put the offense all together. Think about 2019 when we could run on anybody until the playoffs, LOL. <laughs> and it wasn't even that. It wasn't that they, they couldn't. They just didn't. They didn't. It wasn't that they couldn't run in the playoffs. They just didn't do it. But anyway, he said, but now we have an even better backfield. No disrespect to Mark Ingram and much better passing plays at our disposal with much better weapons. If Rashad Bateman can finally turn that into that potential into production for a full season, no one can stop us. Thanks for the time, and let's go, Ravens. I really like that question. I, 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 I love that question because in the way that he put if Rashad Bateman can turn that potential into production, then no one can stop us. You saw the Ravens' offense last year where Rashad Bateman, he wasn't really involved in it like that. And you saw how good they still were in the regular season. And then in the Houston Texans playoff game, Chiefs game, yeah, they did the same thing where they decided to stop themselves. But, and th- I've s- I heard somebody say this before too, but if Rashad Bateman, I think it might have been Coach Evans. I think it was him. If it wasn't, then it was somebody else. But anyway, somebody said if Rashad Bateman, if he gets going and he ends up producing, then that would mean the Ravens offense, they reached a whole nother level. And that's, that's what we all want. That's what we all need. And Rashad Bateman knows, and he's ready to prove it. So, again, what better place to start proving it than, like Roquan Smith said, when the world's watching? Super Bowl dreams. Next question came from my boy Ricky Williams, the Ricky Williams. He said, Angry, I just wanted to get your take on this as we are just over 24 hours away from kickoff over the years we have witnessed some epic super bowl matchups and some that we weren't able to witness because of many different factors injuries being eliminated etc in your opinion if you could have any super bowl matchup past or present who would you want to go head to head on the biggest stage it can be any two teams from any era thanks in advance um now you you said any two teams now i know for me it would be I know that I know they both AFC. I'm not stupid. I ain't that stupid. But anyway, for me it would be last year's Baltimore Ravens and the 2019 Kansas City Chiefs. That's I, I, that's who I would want. Or last year's Baltimore Ravens and last year's should just the Chiefs. I I would and I know and I know both play in the AFC, so that wouldn't be able to happen. But that's who I would want it to be. I will want it to be Lamar versus Mahomes, the Ravens versus the Chiefs, this team that they have struggled with and they just have not been able to beat consistently. So, yeah, it would be them. But, I you know, if it was an NFC team, then I would say, like last year, the best of the best in the regular season at least, the Ravens versus the 49ers. And there will be a rematch of 2012. So, that's – so that that's what I would do. I know um for me it's all it's all recent stuff. Uh cuz look, you Ravens got their Super Bowl in 2001. Then they got their Super Bowl in 2013. So I, I would have wanted them to get another one last year, but they like, you know what? We're going to hold off till 2025. 